Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode here, we're going to be taking a look at the curious condition, which is food poisoning in the air. So how this happens is if you have a very contaminated source of water, in this case right here, look at that. We have a, about a million germs in that liquid water down there, which is getting piped up into an electrolyzer, which when it starts to run, actually produces air and hydrogen that has food poisoning germs inside of it. Interesting, curious. Now, right off the bat, there's some really interesting things when you click on the germs tabs right here. First off, we can see that the change rate is quite significant. It's very, very fast that something is changing. We can also see that the growth factors here is overpopulated, 75% slash dead per cycle right there. So a maximum in hydrogen is 1,265, or maybe it has to do with how much, you know, grams of material right there. So one germ per gram, I guess. So yeah. That's exactly what that's saying right there. And we can also see the temperature that is coming out of that electrolyzer is quite hot, which is killing off those germs. Now, I kicked it back to you guys because this came up in my triple printer challenge where I was using a system where the toilet would then run through a sieve and that sieve, the pure water, would then run into the electrolyzer to produce oxygen for the base. So that was kind of a recirculating system except for the extra water went and turned into oxygen. So I thought that was a pretty clever little system right there or a very efficient use of, of water in my base because that way you don't have to purify it. But the real question is, does this make your duplicates sick? I, I personally don't know. So I'm going to run an experiment here to figure out whether or not that really has a negative impact on your duplicates in a normal game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start up a new standard game and then we'll give this game a name. We'll do a nice experiment with it. It'll all be good. As for my duplicates, Ada over here is has the trait of biohazardous. So she's more susceptible to being sick. Marie is on the opposite hand of that, which is germ resistant. So she has a higher immune system. And then me is right there in the middle. So boom, we'll be able to test this out and have a good benchmark to kind of you know experiment with. This is using the standard setting, so nothing any different than what you would do if you were just in a normal game right here. What I am going to do right off the bat though is I'm going to use debug mode in order to build what I want and get it up and running. So these duplicates are going to have a nice, very easy job. So we're just gonna dig some stuff out for them. There we go. We'll also remove a bunch of this stuff, including some of the oxalite here. I don't want to have too much pressure, but I'll control the oxygen a little bit so that we can get that all figured out. There we go. Okay, so in this setup, what do I need? Well, I need a manual generator to provide power. I'm also going to need a liquid pump down here. So I can go ahead and place one of those. Then the next thing we need is a laboratory. So we're going to go ahead and place one of those down. And this is what you'll be able to use. No big deal. I'll have a wash basin in between the manual generator and the lavatory as well. And then we will set this to direction only right. So when you go to pick up water, you're not carrying a bunch of germs with you. And that way as well. Manual generators tend to get covered in germs. So that's probably a good thing to have there. I'm going to grow a little bit of mealwood down here. That way we can grab that mealwood and actually take it over and cook it down. So for the food, that'll be over here on the left, right? Actually, let's go ahead and just kind of put it up in its own its own place because that's normally what you do if, the, if you had power over here, right? So if we do this number and then we put food up there, a bit of like a micro musher, good, good, good. And then if we put a wash basin here before you go and, you know, cook your food, and then you might have a couple of mess tables next to that. Now for refinement, you'd want to have the water sieve so once we're done, you know, using the lavatory there, that water will go and go directly into this guy. And then it will recirculate back out so that it goes back into the lavatory. So you, we kind of want to go in front of the pump so that we don't end up using the water. We don't want to use this water if we don't have to. So let's say it does that number. And instead of this, we just use a liquid pipe with a bridge here to, you know, bring in extra water as we need it. However, that water, if it doesn't go to, you know, the lavatory, 
we're going to go ahead and take that and bring it over here to where I have an electrolyzer set up. And that's our oxygen solution. So that is powered up just like that. So now we'll be able to see if things become polluted or not. Or if they just kind of remain sanitary. Even though we do have food poisoning in the air. Now typically when we talk about germs, the only germs that I would normally be worried about in the air is slime lung. So at this point, I'm just going to let the dupes, you know, go, and we'll see what happens here with this base over the next several cycles. They should have more than enough to survive, you know, and it'll be it'll be pretty easy to kind of see what happens here. This ration box, I'll probably delete some of these rations, the nutrient bars, so that, you know, again, they have something else to do. So another thing I'm doing here is I have a wash basin next to the water sieve. Reason being is because there's a lot of food poisoning in the sort of polluted dirt that is created with this process. So I want that to end up in this storage compactor over here on the right and the duplicate that touches that, I don't want them to bring it back into the mealwood or something like that to kind of give us a false positive. So I asked you guys um, whether or not you guys thought this was going to be a problem. And I got a lot of mixed responses when I was reading the comments here. Some people thought yes, some people, some people also thought no, which is really, to be honest, Kind of the whole reason why I'm even doing this experiment, just to kind of see what exactly what would happen right there. So, like home media up here has a pretty good point by saying that the the oxygen that's being produced will kill off the germs so quickly that it won't necessarily matter. I mean, one you got the temperature. There's also a limit to how much that food poisoning could be in that tile, and there's also the heat factor that comes from an electrolyzer, you know, essentially giving off hot air. Then there's Capichon right here who's saying that food poisoning doesn't necessarily, uh, or, or shall we say, affect all duplicates, or shall we say they don't affect them all equally. Strakarix is also giving a comment here talking about the idea of uh, if you make things cold as well, that's another way to kind of kill off the germs. Because what I was doing in my triple printer base was, or that challenge base, is I was taking all of the water that's coming out of here and then I was rerouting it into a separate tank where I was going to heat up that water to kill off those germs before I run it to the electrolyzer. Okay, so there was a flush coming from the lavatory here, is that it contains 1,900 grams of water at a decent temperature, and it also has germs inside of it. So there's a little bit of food poisoning germs right there. You know what, I think I wanna go ahead and do this number because this is really what I really wanted to do, is I want to have this liquid, oops, 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 Okay, so one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reroute how this liquid is running out of out of here. So what I want to happen is for this to go up here like that and then have that be able to continue on, onward like that and then I can just disconnect this completely. One of the things that, you know, running this through a toilet, so we say, or the lavatory, is that it should produce more, um, more liquid than it uses increasing the amount of water and then giving it an, uh, a way out. So we can see here in this liquid pipe, there's 60,000 germs of food poisoning, although it is going down quite quickly. Well, I mean, maybe not like rapidly, but it is going down. Now we're starting to see a little bit of that food poisoning coming out into the base. We can see that the temperature here is not ridiculous though. This is kind of a moderate temperature for everything, you know, 24 degrees Celsius. So it's not like we're dealing with a hot base. I'm going to remove meal lice from the menu, and I'm also going to destroy that food right there and clear its floor. There we go. So I got rid of all those rations. And then I think I will use a refrigerator. Good old refrigerator. The way it's meant to be used. How about that? And then we'll queue up a continuous source of lice loaf. If I disable my like auto creation tools, there we go. So this should be a pretty good test. I mean, we're gonna see if people get sick or not. We'll keep a close eye on that immune system. So we can see the amount of food poisoning that's finding its way around. Oh, balls. Some of it found its way into the water down here. So let me go ahead and just um, mop over that water real quick. Cause I did drop some of that down there. So this will purify the water at least. So yeah, there we go. Now we have at least a clean source down here, so we're not drawing up bad water. So if I take a look at the micro musher here, you can see that it contains meal lice and water, and none of that has any germs in it. So there we go. Nice, good, close look up at that. We do now have food poisoning 
moving through the air. But is that falling on anything and making it, you know, have germs? Well, right off the bat here, this lice loaf that is exposed to oxygen with food poisoning in it is not gaining any sort of, um, it's not gaining any germs. This stuff is not becoming germing germy, even though it's next to germy air. Hmm. So the early signs are that it doesn't affect anything at all. It's just kind of a weird byproduct of how the game works, I guess. One of the things we observed a long time ago was that if you run it through the sieve multiple times, it actually seems to cut down on the amount of germs inside of it because some of that is actually being transferred over to that, that, that dirt. So the liquid that's heading going in, if we take a closer look at that, we can see the details of what's inside that it contains 10 kilograms of polluted water. We have 85,000 germs of food poisoning in there. So if we kind of slow this down, we can see what's going to come out, right? So that contains, you know, 4,000, some right there. But I guess the real kicker is that it, this liquid doesn't have any germs in it. Taking a closer look at food poisoning, if you just click on the full info right here, you can see that the temperatures that it, you know, the germ life cycle is, you know, negative 25C to 75C, and then its pressure range. So it can survive between zero and one ton of pressure. And you know what? <laughs> that might be where a super compressor comes in handy because you can, you could crush the germs out of it, couldn't you? I'll have to run an experiment with that here and see what happens. So it multiplies in polluted water or edible things, survives in polluted dirt or genetic ooze, inhabited, which is basically a duplicate, <laughs> inhabited by polluted oxygen and liquid. And you can see right here that it is killed by gas and it is disinfected by solid, hmm, bleach stone, chlorine, or if you pickle it. That'll also get rid of it. So you could make pickles with the, the higher end stuff right there. Of course, if your bladder change goes way up, oh, I guess, you could vomit a whole lot if you get a lot of food poisoning, which could then produce more oxygen. So if you're going for a stress-based base, that could totally work if that's how you want to roll. <laughs> this like whole strategy here relies on them going to the bathroom in order to create enough, you know, oxygen to breathe. It's kind of a funny way of doing it, which I don't think they go to a bath, they don't go to the bathroom enough in order to make that work. All right, so at the end of cycle 10 here, nothing, nobody's getting sick at all. There's no germs in the food, which means there's just simply going to be no germs and the duplicates. And we can see that quite a bit of food poisoning does kind of come out and start to float around, but it doesn't seem to settle on anything. So because it doesn't settle on anything, it doesn't seem to have a negative side effect on the duplicates. So for those of you that were wondering around about that, because I certainly was, it looks like that is a legitimate strategy that you can use. Why that gives off food poisoning into the air, I'm not really sure, but there you have it. You know, so let's go ahead and take this experiment to the next level, right? So if I set up a water tank over here and inside of that water tank, I put a, an extremely high germ count. So we just pump this base full of food poisoning in the air via that electrolyzer. Let's see if that has any effect on my duplicates. I do have some areas in my current base where I have a million food poisoning germs just like sitting there because that's where all of the wastewater from the lavatories has settled. So if I pick disease over here and I go to food poisoning and I say the disease count, let's say we're gonna do 10 million. So very, very high. So you can see what I have going on here. The water is at nearly a, you know 9,888,000 germs right there. When we let this run, we're gonna see a lot of food poisoning germs, but way, way, way less than what we have over here. But still, it's gonna pump it into the air we're going to see a lot of food poisoning now cover cover the base. Another thing I want to experiment here with is if I take that same water, but I compress it into a tile. So remember we were talking about it can't go over a, a one metric ton or a thousand kilograms. Well, what if I do 2000 in a tile? Super compressors can do that. So in this area here, what we should see 
is that the liquid or the germs should be dying off. We can see it's, well, it is dying, but contact with this substance. Hmm. What if we increase the mass significantly? Well, it's still changing at the exact same rate, but what if we take it back to its maximum? Oh, how about that? So it's overpopulated, but once I went beyond one metric ton right there, or the 1,000 kilograms, then it the change rate actually changed. So if this is 999, what happens if I do that? It's still overpopulated. But if I go above that to a super compressed amount, well, it's still overpopulated. Hmm, okay, so when I went to really high pressures, overpopulation went away for whatever reason. Something to be aware of if you are using super compressors though, for the idea that it would kill germs, since we mentioned that earlier. Okay, so in this situation, we can see that there's just, you know, look at that, 13,000 food poisoning germs right here. And we'll take a look at this lice loaf that was just created, you know, with all of these germs around it, 7,000 germs behind it in the oxygen, and it just has no germs on it. So I think we're quite safe to use clean water with food poisoning inside of it to feed our electrolyzers, even though when we use the overlay, which is food poisoning going everywhere, you know, in the current build of the game, as per the date, it doesn't seem to have any negative effects. At least that I can see right here. Everybody's still very healthy. One last thing to look at is the temperature and what we could see is the temperature here is not bad at all. We're talking 24 degrees Celsius, even though this electrolyzer is running a lot, you know, a good amount of that oxygen is just, there's just so much of it around. What if I really increase the temperature of that liquid? Hmm? Oop, I'm breaking my pump, but that is just destroying all of those germs. Hmm, doesn't seem necessary. Just to make sure my duplicants can get sick, let's go ahead and just change their water source to being like massively polluted. And then we'll watch all of them get very, very sick, you know, very quickly. So now that I have polluted the water source here, Let's go ahead and just empty this real quick and then I'll get rid of it. So now, now when I go to cook this up, I should see like horrible amounts of, of food poisoning everywhere. Yeah, so there we go. Now we got lice loaf, look at that. <laughs> 345,000 germs. And we can see, just look at how rapidly Marie is getting sick here. Down to 75%, just like that. Now Meep is getting sick. Ada right there is the only one surviving this like horrible amount of food poisoning. <laughs> well, there you have it guys. I think that was a very successful little experiment for you guys with some really useful information. So even though clean water has food poisoning in it and once you run it through that electrolyzer, it lets off a little bit of food poisoning that doesn't seem to have a negative effect on your, you know, on buildings or anything, the surface of anything. Now this is, per the current build of the game. So if the game has progressed since then, I'm not sure if this is going to work as it currently does. But there you have it, guys. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative or helpful. Thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know down there in the comment section below. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.